Thank you. Oh, oh, that's you. You did that. Um, got it. I'm also recording on my own. Thank you, Jen. Um, I noticed that as you were talking, it was a little bit choppy for me. So I'm, I'm, I'm very helpful and optimistic that my internet uh, holds out for us. Um, for those of you who. Uh, <clears throat> For those of you who don't know me, my name is Corey. Um, some of you may recognize me as an employee from the co-op. I've worked at Whole Foods Co-op for just shy of 10 years. I work in the IT department. Uh, I do the computers. And uh, my working relationship with Whole Foods Co-op has nothing to do with why I'm here today. Um, I'm, I'm not here today representing Whole Foods Co-op, but a civilian who use, utilizes uh, curbside waste removal service on a regular basis. Also, I'll have the chat open here. Uh, I guess anybody or everybody let me know if I, uh, if my stream goes away or gets choppy or something, uh, if we're having any troubles. Um, I'll tell you, I'm still not 100% sure how or why um, I'm the person putting this workshop together. Uh, a while back, I started a conversation with Jen. I said, hey, Jen, uh, you know what I think would be a great public class for the co-op to host? A class that goes over uh, basically just the basics of recycling, uh, curbside pickup stuff, like what, what I can and cannot put in my recycling. Because honestly, before I started researching this information for this class, uh, I was doing a lot of stuff wrong. So, so um, I had the idea that I wanted to see a class like this or participate in a class like this. And uh, some days after that, Jen called me up at my extension and said, hey, do you want to do that class? Uh, to which I replied like, uh, <laughs> sure, <laughs> why not? Uh, that was, I don't know, five or six months ago. I spent that time very slowly researching proper curbside recycling practices for our area, our area being, uh, I'll go over our area, but the area around, I'll, I'll, I'll say my class is specifically geared for this area, 530 square mile area around Duluth. So um, for those of you with us from Australia, <laughs> uh, I guess, I don't know, maybe some of this stuff is still like uh, more of a foundation for uh, all proper recycling, or I don't know, maybe it, maybe it won't be relevant. Um, we'll find out. <laughs> so, uh, other, other than the research I've done, I'm no authority on this subject. I'm not an expert in the field. I was very fortunate to have the opportunity to connect with AJ Axtell. Uh, she is the environmental, pro pro environmental program coordinator at WLSSD. She's an expert in the field. Uh, part of her duties is outreach and public education. So like she was my number one person to go to, a great resource of information for myself um, or for anyone looking for this information. Um, most of my information came from WLSSD's website and, you know, beyond that, um, she helped validate or explained, answered all my questions that I had about the information that I found there. For the, anyone who isn't familiar with WLSSD, which is five letters that's hard to say in succession, uh, is the Western Lake Superior Sanitary District. It's a government organization which was established by Minnesota legislature in 1971 to, quote, uh, I, I got this quote off their website, I believe, uh, to address serious environmental pollution problems in the lower St. Louis River Basin end quote. Um, they accomplished this by operating several facilities in Duluth and Rice Lake uh, for the collection, transfer, and handling of solid waste, recycling, and disposal. The area that WLSSD oversees is, like I said, a 530 square mile uh, basic uh, radius <laughs> around uh, this area. It includes Carlton, Cloquet, Duluth, Hermantown, Proctor, Rice Lake, Thompson, Renshaw, and surrounding townships. 
Uh, WLSSD is the government unit that oversees the management of solid waste removal and recycling for our area. And like I said, that's they're like where I got all my information. Not all my information. There's also there's uh, I'll share my uh, I'll have Jen email you my list of sources, but uh, it's mostly it's all websites. It's all online. It's all accessible to everyone. Waste management has some great information out there, um, which they seem to keep pretty up to date. So I was really impressed with what I found uh, specific to this area about recycling and waste management. So what are we doing here? Like I said, I put this workshop together primarily to go over proper recycling practices. That's mostly what it is. Um, just like what we should and shouldn't put in our curbside pickup bins. Uh, and then I touch on just like a little bit more than that uh, for like stuff you can't put in the garbage either. The reason I did this was just because I personally wanted to have this information. Uh, as I spoke to my peers like Jen, I found, or like every one of my friends, I found that uh, there was a desire, the same desire that I had to obtain this knowledge was like, people were like, oh yeah, that's great. I, I would like to know that too. So like, here I am uh, just sharing what I found. I think this information is really important because we all have a personal connection to waste. Um, I think it's pretty safe to say that we all like utilize a curbside <laughs> waste, of not even just curbside, like when you're at a store and throw stuff away, like we're constantly uh, throw, discarding things in our lives. So uh, because of the automation of like curbside pickup, especially here where like we don't even have to sort it, it's pretty easy to let it fall into the background and develop, you know, habits that aren't necessarily ideal or beneficial. Um, it's very possible that the information that I'm gonna share here isn't anything new. You might wanna say to me after this uh, short lecture that you didn't learn anything that you didn't already know. And I say, that's terrific. Um, that, that's the ideal situation is that uh, everybody actually already just knows this and um, we're recycling the way that we should for optimum efficient recycling in Minnesota. Uh, that being said, this is gonna be a really short lecture. I've done my best to make this as concise as possible. I really only have a few points to go over that I thought were important that I found along the way. And then I'll open the floor to questions, which I may or may not be able to answer. Hopefully I can point people in the right direction um, to somebody who can answer the questions you might have or comments or concerns. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to be going over plastic, metal, glass, paper, and then a few waste uh, hazardous materials. Uh, my last note before we get started with that is that when it comes to recycling, the answers aren't black and white. Like we are traversing a vast gray land here that, uh, you know, there's two different pickup services you could have in Duluth, Hartels or WLSSD. If you live in the cities, there might be like several more than that. Um, if you have any questions or something doesn't feel right, or uh, you just want clarification for something, you can always contact your provider, the person who does your curbside pickup, recycling and garbage, should be able to tell you what you can and can't do with it. So they're, I guess, our, our best fallback source of information, uh, the source, I guess. Recycling, do's and please. Please don't. Uh, metal, plastic, paper, and glass. Those are the things we recycle. Most of what we're going to talk about is plastics. I feel like uh, it's maybe safe to say that uh, most of our recycling bin volume, at least by volume, is plastic. A lot of stuff is made out of plastic. Uh, let's see. This this slide that I made is a little confusing. There's a lot going on here. It's very busy and I apologize for that, but we're going to get through it. I promise. Um, let's start with what you can put in the recycling. Plastic bottles, tubs, jars, jars and lids. Rinse and flatten, obviously. Uh, you don't have to get stuff super clean. They, your recycling is going to get sorted and cleaned and sorted again. So it's going to get cleaned and sanitized but I guess don't put, don't put like food waste in the recycling, obviously. 
I put down here, place caps back on bottles. Um, I like to stick with, just put, put the caps on the bottles. Uh, I, AJ told me this is not a huge deal. It doesn't really matter if you put a bottle and the cap in the recycling, it's gonna end up where it needs to go. If you keep the plastic bottle and the lid together, they might end up you know, being recycled together and they're made out of the same type of plastic. So that makes sense. I have a question. But they're gonna end up in the same place anyway. Not a huge deal. Uh, so let's start, I guess, at the top left of my, uh, my thing here. I put a little question mark next to the three arrows that are constantly following each other forever. Uh, this, this symbol, it can be very misleading. It's not, uh, I've learned that it's not like a sanctioned symbol of any kind. It's not like a regulated symbol. It doesn't always mean that something's recyclable, for instance, on plastic. Um, Every single piece of plastic has to have a resin coat on it, and that's all that this number is. It, it doesn't necessarily need to be associated with that symbol. I was always taught growing up that it's like, you do number one, two, three, and four, and not five. But apparently this, this isn't the way that uh, plastic is recycled. Uh, the, that number literally just means the type of resin that the plastic's made out of, not whether or not somebody wants to take it to recycle it. So I always thought that plastic being recycled meant you took all the number five and put it somewhere and melted it down or whatever and turned it back into plastic, which is not how plastics recycled. Plastics are recycled by whether or not a recycling, a company that will recycle the, the material can use it. So the supply and demand for plastic to be taken somewhere and sorted and recycled is what it was previously used for. So like yogurt, Let's see. Let's start at the let's start at the top. I guess I was doing the recycling symbol. We've got uh, the planter symbol. Uh, all like little plastic planters. Basically the same shape and size as a yogurt tub, but they're not recyclable. I guess some are really small. But uh, garden pots, flower starters, stuff like that have to go in the garbage. They won't get recycled. If it's a drink, it's recyclable pretty much. If it's a if it's a bottle. It had a beverage in it, it has a cap on it, rinse it out, put it in the recycling. Bags never go in the recycling, the curbside recycling. Um, although there is a place that you, there are many places you can take them that we'll talk about. But this is a big one to me. I have been putting clamshells in my recycling for a long time. Clamshells from like the deli, produce, uh, single serving stuff that you get from restaurants that have the little recycling symbol on them and are probably made out of number five, not recyclable. You can put them in your recycling. They're gonna get sorted out and put into a landfill. Single serving stuff. I put the two little pictures of the yogurt cups. Single serving recycling stuff. And this is another huge one for me that uh, not recyclable. If it's like a single, uh, a single yogurt cup, a single apple, apple sauce cup, whatever, those should go in the garbage. Those don't get recycled, they get sorted out. The reason being the people who recycle yogurt tubs or like tubs or whatever, they just recycle bigger tubs. Like I put the green check mark next to the, the big yogurt because non-single surf, non-single serve stuff is, uh, there's a market for it. Somebody, you sort it, you put it in a truck, you bring it to somebody and they just take those and they turn that plastic back into those, which I hope makes sense. Um, I kind of, I decided to go off of my notes and rant. So I'm sorry if it sounds like I'm ranting. Um, where am I? Plastic bags, not recyclable in your curbside pickup but very recyclable. You can take uh, plastic bags to several places. I'm pretty sure you can take them to Target. You can drop them off at the co-op. We uh, at Denfeld, I know we have a bin right next to the door as you're walking out. It's not just bags that can be recycled in these. It's any like polyethylene. So like the type of plastic bags that if you were to push your thumb into it, it would stretch and not rip. A good example of plastic that rips when you put your thumb into it is um, like cellophane. You press on cellophane, it just rips kind of like paper. That's not recyclable ever. Uh, plastic bags, frozen vegetable bags, uh, shrink wrap, all that stuff can go with the bag 
stuff. Uh, I forgot to put a little red X next to the lid on the yogurt tub. Uh, there's a there's one color plastic that can be problematic to the companies who recycle them, and it's black plastic. There's something about the dye that makes plastic black that makes it not compatible with um, the rest of the recycling. So black plastic, not recyclable. Everything else, tubs, good. Um, also put down here large buckets like five gallon buckets don't put those in the recycling anything used for auto fluids anything anything for a car um you don't want to put in the recycling anything used for gardening if it's like a if it's like a polyethylene bag but it was used for fertilizer or soil or any gardening thing you want to put those in the garbage they're uh considered uh, hazardous or they mess up the recycling process in some way, so they can't be recycled. I think that's recycling. Did I? Clamshells. I think that's it for, for plastic. We'll probably want to talk more about this. What, uh, I got questions. Let's, can you recycle plastic bags that have a silver lining in the, oh, like, uh, you mean, do you mean like, um, Like the bags that like almond thins come in that are like plastic but look metallic. Is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah. Some of some of them have you know it looks recycled. like a regular those plastic bag. In, um, but does it? The metal clamshells. Uh, clamshells are um, like if you bought a packaged salad mix, a uh, lettuce mix. A clamshell is the the like long rectangular tub with a lid that's you pop open but it's still connected like on a hinge and you can reclose it that's a clamshell or if you buy like if you got something if you got like deli food that if you bought like a prepackaged salad or something or just loose lettuce that's those are clamshells anything that that i guess has the lid attached Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, think of a real clam that opens and closes. That's great. <laughs> sure, sure. I guess that's a clam shell because uh, they're like a clam, literally. Um, some of the Amazon bags, I think, have some silver lining or something. That's where I was wondering if that person was asking those kind of plastic bags that yeah there's there's certain kinds they're usually like a ziploc um you know bags that have a zip at the top and they you they they look like normal packaging on the outside but then when you look at the inside and it has like a metallic looking lining i think i can hear that people are talking but it's all distorted um i'm wondering if my streaming software makes it so that I can't hear people. Uh -oh. um. Okay, it's Jen. <laughs> Hi, Jen. Hi, you're doing great, Corey. Don't worry. Um, yeah, so Corey did say that the, the bags with the silver lining are not recyclable. Um, and then I think what we can do, we'll just wait and do questions at the very end. And that way we, um, Corey can wear his headphones and be able to hear everything. Does that make sense, Corey? Sounds great. Awesome. And I, okay. I may have trouble actually hearing, <laughs> but uh, we'll get to that uh, when the time comes. I'll take my headphones off for now because uh, it's easier for me to talk with them on. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, there's something else with bags. Um, Ziploc bags can go with the other bag stuff. Um, you have to cut the tops off of them. The zip, the zipper part is not recyclable. The rest of the bag is. But again, not in your curbside pickup in uh, wherever you put your bags, whoever, whoever picks up bags. I think that covers plastic for now. Uh, the rest of this isn't going to take long. Uh, recycling that isn't plastic 
seems pretty straightforward, like aluminum cans, rinse them, crush them if you want to, you don't have to. Tin cans, same deal. Uh, it's all gonna get crushed together anyway. Um, aerosol cans, should I? That's a very good question. What happens to the plastic bags that you give at the Whole Foods Co-op? Um, I don't know, but I can find out. We, we have, uh, I know that we have a specific, like we have an organization that's not related to us who we work with who recycles plastic bags. So I don't know what their process is, but they're not like affiliated, I don't think with the state, like our curbside pickup is. Like our curbside pickup is a, is a proprietary business, but they're sanctioned, they have a license with the state and so they have to like, you know, prove that they're like recycling and how much of their recycling and stuff that they're doing. If you don't cut the zipper off the ziplock, will they just throw it away? I assume uh, that's, I, I, AJ and I didn't talk about the ziplock bag thing for a long time, but, but she just said, if you, if you don't, she said, cut the zipper off. I assume that, that, uh, I assume that they just throw it away. I guess I don't really know. Um, yeah, uh, metal, back to metal. Do we need to remove paper labels from aluminum cans? Great question. Um, I was told you don't. Um, label, any label that's on uh, even, even uh, plastic, metal, or glass, I guess most of this, uh, it is usually tin cans that have the paper label on them. No, you don't have to remove it. You can keep that in there it'll come off in the process um, that they sort it. Um, aerosol cans, uh, you can put in the recycling, just make sure that they're totally expired. You know, hold it down at the end and make sure that, that no gas is coming out of it. If it's pressurized, it's obviously a hazard. It can like explode. So, but totally recyclable. Um, glass, bottles and canning jars, it's pretty much bottles and canning jars for glass. Um, bottle lids are recyclable. I would, I, I read in several places to take the bottle lids off. AJ said again that it doesn't really matter. The, the caps will get taken off. I assume somebody has to take the caps off at some point. So maybe just take the caps. And that's probably why they say take the caps off of glass. Um, you can, the canning jars are, You're supposed to wash out cans, glass jars, correct? Um, you are you you want to rinse cans and glass jars out. You don't necessarily need to wash them. Uh, they will get sanitized. They're going to get washed in the like. They're going to get sorted. Then they're going to get washed. Then they're going to get sorted again. And then they're going to be taken to where they get recycled. So like you don't have to vigorously wash out any of these things. Uh, just rinse them well so that there's not a bunch of food residue on them or liquid or whatever, sugar. But um, the, the metal lids on canning jars, recyclable, just take them off of the jars. You'll see if you, if you go to any of the sources uh, that I'm gonna share, you'll see a lot of places saying that, that uh, recycling curbside pickup like won't take broken glass or not to use broken glass. Uh, AJ told me that it's fine when they load the, when they take your bin and they throw it into the vehicle that they put it in, it's gonna get broken anyway. So what about colored glass containers? Uh, if it's a bottle or a jar and it's colored glass, it's fine to put into the recycling. Any glassware isn't recyclable. So if it's like, uh, if it's like a glass Tupperware or a glass you drink out of or a clear plate, you can't recycle those. You're not supposed to recycle those. Those should go in the garbage. Um, yeah, glassware, glassware, no good um, for recycling. Pretty much if you can drink out of it or it's a jar, I guess. And I was hoping to touch base with AJ more on the why you can't do glassware stuff, but I know the, the point she got across to me was absolutely not glassware just isn't recyclable. So there's a reason for it. Um, and that was her answer for it. Uh, what about the metal strip? Metal strip from the top of olive oil glass containers. Oh, sure. Um, 
I was told it's fine. It's fine to leave those on there. They will, they will, it, throughout the process of, of it being sorted, there's like a bunch of machines and conveyor belts and stuff that are involved in the process of sorting these things. And it's my understanding that any, any bands that are left around um, bottles or containers are either made out of a plastic or metal that should be recyclable and, and should get taken off later in the process. So you don't need to worry about taking those things off and possibly cutting yourself. I've definitely, I've definitely caught myself trying to do that before. It's a great question. Uh, paper, canning lids. Canning lids, yes. Canning lids, just take them off. I guess it, it they'll get taken off anyway, but it's, you're, you're probably making someone's job in the sorting process easier, I guess, if you take the lids off. The bands thing, um, Can they be recycled? Yes, they can. The the again, this is something that I touch base specifically with AJ about. The lids from the jars should be fine to be recycled. Pretty much, my understanding is if it's metal, if it's like hard metal, you can put it in the recycling. Um, I'm sure there are exceptions to this. Like obviously, if you were like renovating and taking a bunch of copper pipes out of your house or something, you probably don't want to, there's places to take stuff like that, like large amounts of any type of metal. But if it's metal from like a consumer product or something like a jar, it's pretty much recyclable and is okay to put in the recycling. Uh, paper, not a lot to say about paper. If it looks and feels like paper, it's paper and you can recycle it. And it's like crazy to me how much, paper they say like it's go okay to go ahead and put in your bin like you can put magazines in your recycling you can put mail in your recycling uh you get the the letters with that little plastic the little piece of plastic window on them those are fine to go in the recycling um frozen food boxes that are like very almost not waxy but almost like plastically on the outside um like sheen they're very like painted on on the outside totally recyclable Cardboard, recyclable, even Tyvek envelopes. I'm not sure I know what a Tyvek envelope is, but I'll look it up. I'll look it up. Um, milk cartons, Tetra packs, Tetra packs. Aluminum foil, no. Aluminum foil, never recyclable. Um, Tyvek doesn't tear. Oh, sure. Shelf stable milk. Those are not recyclable. They were, they, uh, there was like a, I, at least for this area, I recall there being a specific, and I talked to AJ a little bit about this. There was, there was a time several years ago that they tried recycling, uh, those, those like what soy milk comes in or like shelf stable milk. Um, they don't take them anymore. It didn't work out, but someone made an effort to try to recycle those. Um, they're, they're, and it failed and they're not recyclable, at least for the time being. Uh, pizza boxes, pizza boxes, totally recyclable unless they have grease on them. Like with any paper, if, if it has a bunch of grease on it, it should go in the garbage and not the recycling. Uh, the way that paper is recycled is it's mixed with a bunch of water and then squish back into paper and oil and water don't, they don't work well together. So um, the oil ruins the paper. Uh, interesting thing you could do with the pizza boxes. If you are like me and you order like way more delivery pizza than you should, <laughs> than you feel that you should, uh, maybe the bottom of the pizza box is like super greasy and the top isn't greasy at all. Rip the top off, put that in your recycling throw the greasy part. Uh, pizza boxes can also go into compost bins. So that's another way. What are Tetra Packs? Can pizza boxes? Oh, I see you're answering that question. Thank you. <laughs> um, community, put in community compost. Oh, I don't know. They can go in compost bins. Anyway. Um, I guess that's that's it for now for my recycling portion. Uh, everything else that I have is just just a, like a tiny little arbitrary list of things that I picked out. 
Uh, if you go, if you visit WLSSD's website and go to their disposal guide, they have an A through Z list of like anything you can think of. If you ever have a question about like what, like can I, what do I do with my uh, like water heater or something? That they probably have that in there and it'll tell you where to take it. These are just some things I found that I thought were interesting. Uh, auto fluids, well, auto fluids is an obvious one. Um, don't try to recycle auto fluids. There's a place to take them. Every gallon of, this is a quote from uh, earth911.com. Every gallon of used motor oil that is improperly discarded can contaminate 1 million gallons of drinking water. Uh, you can take all auto fluids to the household hazardous waste facility drop off, which I, in my list of sources, I list all the uh, WLSSD places, uh, locations where you can find them to drop these things off. Auto batteries, any company, any business who sells uh, lead acid batteries, like car batteries, is required to, by law, to accept them for free. So if you ever have an old car battery that you have to get rid of, you can discard something like, like five in one trip. So if you have one car battery to get rid of, take it to a place that sells car batteries. Even if you didn't buy your car battery there, they're supposed to take it from you for free. Double A, triple A battery, batteries, alkaline batteries uh, can be put in the garbage. I, uh, I learned this. Um, this was news to me. I've been recycling my batteries. It turns out that uh, batteries are very, what a, I have a quote somewhere. Household batteries. Uh, these batteries may be placed in the garbage since the recyclable content is low and they are not a fire hazard. That's pca.minnesota.us. Um, apparently, uh, there's not a good reason to recycle batteries because like not much of them gets recycled. And for the most part, those batteries are just whatever it is that's getting recycled in them. Most of the volume of it is getting thrown away anyway. Um, AJ backed this up. She said there's no reason to recycle batteries. Just go ahead and throw them in the garbage. Alkaline batteries, we're talking obviously double AA, A, triple A, um, rechargeable or not, doesn't matter. If they're all alkaline based. Uh, it's fine. If you don't feel comfortable doing this, you can do what we do in the office at the co-op, which is uh, if you go to thinkgreenfromhome.com, um, it's a waste management website, they will, you can order little boxes that you put your batteries in, you fill it up, you send it to them, they recycle them, you get another box. Um, oh, medications. What was that name again? Uh, it's thinkgreenfromhome.com. Thinkgreenfromhome.com. Rechargeable batteries, like batteries in your cell phone or any electronics, should never go in the garbage or the recycling. Uh, there's places that you can take them. Most recycling, Anything with a computer in it, computer parts recycling, uh, you can take to the WLSSD um, hazardous. I have it written down <laughs> sources, which I removed from this. Oh. Household hazardous waste facility. Um, that's it. Uh, here are, uh, I'll have Jen email these out, but uh, WLSSD.com, wastemanagement.com, earth911.com, PCA Minnesota US, plasticfilmrecycling.org had some interesting information about, specifically about like polyethylene and the bags and like what you can and cannot put in those bag things. And then the locations, there's a material recovery center, yard waste compost site, hazardous, household hazardous waste facility. Um, those are the three WLSSD facilities. And that's all I have. Um, so 
That's it. <laughs> if if uh, I imagine people have questions, uh, people, some people were asking questions while this was going on, and uh, that I think I answered. But uh, I guess the floor, Jen, are you? Is that? Oh, I, th I saw her thing. Oh, I'm here. Oh, I got to um, put my. <laughs> now I can hear. Awesome. Okay, there were a couple of questions at the very beginning that we missed. So I'm going to scroll back up to the top of the chat. Okay. Arthur asked, can colored glass and plastic be recycled? Uh, yes. Plastic, uh, colored glass is fine as long as it's, you know, as long as it isn't glassware, like a plate or drinking glass or Tupperware. Um, it's fine. Colored plastic that has uh, colored plastic is fine um, unless it's black. If it's black, it. Uh, I guess I always assumed that if you tried to recycle black plastic, that it would just turn all the other plastic black. And like some people want like, you know, like their yogurt containers are blue or whatever, and they can't have them blue because when you mix black dye in with stuff, it just turns it black or it turns it a totally different color because no such thing as black dye exists. It's like really, really, really dark combination of a bunch of other dyes. Um, but I, that, uh, that's, I'm just making that up. I mean, <laughs> I, that's one reason, an excuse for it that I can think of, but uh, AJ said no black plastic, no, no black bags. Um, you know, you can put them in the bin, but they're just, they're gonna get pulled out at that first sorting location and they're gonna go into the landfill. Awesome. Okay. Karen said, is this only true for Duluth? Doesn't this vary from town to town depending on the buyers for the materials? It does. It does. Every, um, I guess, every state and then maybe, maybe by state, maybe by township, depending on how big like the cities are. Uh, it, it varies by whoever the, your pickup provider is. So you can always contact who, whoever the company is who you pay to pick up your, your curbside stuff. You can contact and ask any questions that you have, but it, it does vary. It's, it's the, the whole conversation, as soon as I started looking into this and I like wanted solid answers for my questions, I found that there weren't like solid answers for all my questions because like it does vary from place to place. I'm lucky that if, if I'm just talking to people from this area, we only have hotels and waste management. But if you live in Minneapolis, you know, there might be a hundred companies that I, I don't know. Um, so my information is specific to this area. Um, but if you had any questions about, you could use what, what we've talked about here as a foundation, I guess, to go off of and then ask your provider if, uh, you know, can I put glassware in the recycling or whatever. All right, Pat had a question about styrofoam. Um, and I don't think styrofoam is recyclable. It, it isn't, the, the short answer is it isn't. There's nobody who recycles it. Um, Styrofoam is recyclable, like in a technical sense. There just has to be somebody who's going to pick it up. There has to be there has to be an end, you know, person who picks it up and turns it into you know more styrofoam or whatever, and that just doesn't exist. Growing up, we had in my hometown we had a styrofoam recycling place, and you had to bring your styrofoam to them. Um, and that's the only styrofoam recycling place I've ever seen or heard of in my life. Um, so this area. Uh, in, uh, for, as far as I'm aware, state of Minnesota, there's nowhere that you can bring styrofoam um, to have it recycled. It's just not, apparently it's not, there's no way to make it profitable. So no one does it, unfortunately. Okay. And Pat also said, are the numbers one through six no longer to be used to guide what is recyclable plastic? That is correct. That is, uh, that was like maybe the, the biggest lecture thing that AJ addressed when we when in the times that we spoke was that those numbers those numbers 
shouldn't be used as guidelines. And apparently those, those numbers were never meant to be used as guidelines. Um, it sounds like, um, I don't know. I remember being told that they were guidelines, but but uh, I'm being told now by at least our expert here that that's that's just not the case. It's like a it's like a shape and size thing. Great. Um, one more question for clarification. Oops, sorry. Um, as far as yogurt lids can't be recycled, is that only if they are black or just no lids whatsoever? Only if they're black. Yogurt lids are fine. Um, yeah, yo yogurt lids are fine. Um, it's just only, it's only black plastic. Okay. And then also paper, can you recycle paper Starbucks cups? No, any, uh, my, our, what AJ told me was our, our, our like baseline foundation for everything was, uh, excluding bottles. If it's like, if it's used, and I think how I say this because it, it's like all of these things are used for food. But if it's if it's a cup, if it's a plastic plastic cutlery, if it's like used for like um, if it's cup <laughs> or cutlery, it's not recyclable. I know a lot of people are companies are transitioning to compostable cups in cutlery, which like hopefully continues to happen because yeah, that stuff's just garbage. Oh yeah, UPS, UPS will accept um, pretty much anything that you um, receive in a package as filler to keep your package safe, you can take to UPS. Uh, I imagine, uh, I, I haven't looked into this. I imagine there's other places that you can take them, but but UPS has been doing that for as long as, as I know. Um, thank you for that, Kelly. That's uh, good information. Uh, here's a question for you. Is there any movement to have food waste containers for composting picked up by waste management and hard tells? Plymouth is starting this um, for a fee. Oh, wow. Not that I'm aware of, but um, that's that's cool. <laughs> um, I don't know. I not not that I'm aware of. And um, maybe if we all get together and <laughs> let our our teams know, they'll do that for us. Allison would like to know: Is plastic silverware recyclable? Nope. Plastic silverware, plastic silverware, plastic cups, paper cups not recyclable. Art mentions that the uh, the numbers on the containers were potentially um, allowing for food safety. So the numbers referred to if it was a food safe plastic or not. That makes sense. Um, Cause everything that you, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> like everything that you get like a year container or whatever is number five. Um, so thank you for um, that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dr. Lara said that it was, um, I'm sorry, Lara, could you um, unmute yourself? What was standard in San Francisco? The curbside compost pickup. Oh, neat. Yeah. That would be exciting. Right. That would be amazing. All right. Allison asked, can stickers and labels be left on boxes before they're recycled? Yep. Um, there was like one thing that AJ and I talked about, about, the, the bottom line was, yeah, you can leave those on. Okay, terrific. And then I think that was the last of our questions. If anyone else has anything they'd like to add, you can definitely unmute and ask at this time. So as Corey said, this was really specific to the 500 mile radius around this area that is serviced with um, WLSSD, but it's really easy to, to contact your own providers and see um, you know, what their policies are because it might be different where you live. So it is something worth looking into. 
But good to know. I had no clue about the black plastic. And I learned I, I, a couple of other things too. I didn't either. I, I have a friend who literally will take my black plastic out of my recycling and throw it into the garbage, which is like one of those things in my life that made me like be like, man, I wish I like, <laughs> I wish I knew if that was like true or not, but it is. <laughs> Perfect. It out. Well, wonderful. All right. Someone has their hand raised. Judy, did you have something you'd like to add? You can go ahead and unmute. Okay, got it. So it, did I hear correctly that, okay, this is plastic uh, packaging, no number on it. This is uh, hard plastic from a, um, obviously scotch tape or tape. Can they go in? Oh, I see. Um, I would say no. Um, if it's, if it's, my understanding from this is that when it's plastic, if it's not like a certain size or shape, if it's like just a small piece of plastic, it's, mm -hmm. um, it's not going to get recycled. It's going to get sorted out. Okay. It's going to get sorted, like pre-sorted out before it even gets like officially sorted. Okay. Um, I have a couple more questions then. Grapefruit. Okay, grapefruit comes in the plastic bag with the red netting or oranges or fruit. Do we have to tear off this red? It looks like it's a plastic. That's a good question. <laughs> that might be one I have to get back to you on. I. Uh... I have no idea. Okay. I would cut it off, but I don't know if that's right. <laughs> right. Then I just would uh, like to say one something that I just bought at the co-op and I noticed very interesting. I it was wrapped in this black plastic. <laughs> okay. And okay. I'm thinking, okay, but on on their packaging it says recyclable but it says recyclable for the cover which is this paper but uh, there's a line through the black recyclable oh i have it upside down i think okay plastic wrap so the plastic wrap has a line through it i mean i found this fascinating and then for for this cover made out of paper it's you can recycle it and this is right on the package interesting yeah it's a new brand uh what is it that the co-op has of um, fake meat you know <laughs> okay <laughs> then my last question is i brought a whole bunch of bags to the co-op last week it's the tetracycle that now so many of the chips are coming in and they say on those bags they're recyclable um, but we have to have a place that will recycle them and so I wish the co-op would consider doing that. Okay. I, uh... So you can, I left it with the uh, the service representative and she also thought it would be a good idea, but she said she would pass on the information. Okay. Yeah, that'll definitely happen. Um, they will hand that off to the store managers and our leadership team. And um, if it's something that they determine is um, uh, needed and wanted and supported, then yeah. You know, the co-op will do that. <laughs> because now so many of, of the bags are coming as these bags and they're pretty decent. I mean, you could pack clothes in them. They're so sturdy. Definitely. Does thank anyone you. have, thank you, Judy. Does thank anyone you. else have any other questions, comments? Uh, I see a, a one that didn't get answered uh, uh, asking if tape can be left on boxes. And I don't know. I, the tape's not recyclable. So 
um i would i would take it off i know some boxes it's like there's so much tape on them it's like not possible to get the tape off um in which case i'd almost say don't recycle the box um i feel but, like i would kind of equate that to the plastic window on an envelope though sure that's a good point i mean if it's just a little bit of tape uh it'll you know it'll disappear when they i don't know you know when they whatever that's a good point i i I guess I don't really know about the tape on on the boxes. Um, I don't remember seeing anything about it, but it is a terrific question that I wish I had the answer to because, um, like every pretty much every box has tape on it. <laughs> I'm sorry that I don't have the answer to that. That's okay. We, that's one we can check into and see if we can get the answer. Definitely. I don't know if you know. did this in the beginning because I. Um was late, but uh, what happens when they sort all this stuff out? Um, do they say where does it get shipped to China or what, where does all the recyclable stuff go? That all depends on uh, what, your, what your plastic, it all depends on what region you're in. For us, everything goes to Minneapolis and then it goes, it gets sorted in Minneapolis and then it goes to wherever it goes. Um, to actually be recycled and turned back into okay. plastic or whatever. Um, the sending stuff to China thing doesn't happen anywhere anymore. Uh, but when that did happen, it was a thing that happened on the coast, uh, like major cities on the coast. It wouldn't make sense for, for Minnesota to send our stuff any any farther than we have to, because then we're just sending you know trucks mm -hmm. all the way to the coast and then putting it on a boat or whatever. Um, good question. Okay. Thank you. Wonderful. Anyone else have anything they'd like to share? I just want to say how amazing this is. Thank you so much. These are so many questions that have been <laughs> gnawing at me for so long. So I'm, I'm really grateful for the information. Awesome. Uh Thank you, everyone, for the positive feedback. I was really nervous about doing this uh, at all. And um, I just thank you so much. <laughs> I did kind of wrinkle you into it, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> well, it is um, also confusing. I mean, it's it's and like that number of thing we were told. In fact, I went to um, waste management websites in the past and it did identify these are your numbers. So I've been looking at the numbers and so. Thank you, it was very good. Definitely. Well, thank you everybody for your attention, your participation. Thank you, Corey, for a very awesome presentation. You answered a lot of questions for everybody. And again, I, um, I encourage you to check out, if you're not in this area, check out your local area's um, sanitation department and what their rules are because they they could very well be different than what we've gone over for our location. And uh, just give a shout out to WLSSD for providing a lot of this information and for helping us keep our community clean and giving us an, you know, the chance to recycle and compost and all those fun things that they're doing for us. All right, well, we're going to wrap it up. Thank you again, everybody. Very happy to have had this presentation. Thank you, Corey. And I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your, your lovely Thursday evening. Of course, it's not Thursday evening in Perth, Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. you Take care, everyone. Thanks for, thank you for coming. Yep. Thank you, Corey. Okay. Job well done.